Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, and I figured that there is no better way to celebrate than to check out the Stepfather series. And, fun fact, this is a video that I had written and ready to go last year, but then my computer died with all of my files on it, and I had to scramble to create a quick replacement, and in, in the meantime, the holiday had then passed, so I saved it for this year. So get ready for a timeline. One year in the making. We head back to 1987 for the beginning of things with The Stepfather, kicking off with a barely recognizable John Locke. But a few minutes later, ah, there he is. He's just killed an entire family, and then we bounce ahead one year. We meet Harry Potter Jr.'s mother, and she's dating Jerry now, and also has a teenage daughter. His new life isn't going as well as he had planned, and his previous wife's brother is on the hunt for him. A shot of a newspaper tells us that we're set in November of 1985, and Steph starts to get suspicious of her stepdad. He gives her a Cosmopolitan, and it's the November 1985 issue, so that's actually consistent, and Jerry slowly snaps, killing a psychiatrist. And then things get worse to the point that he starts to prep to move on again. He quits his job and creates a new identity, and then starts to confuse things. Wait a minute. Who am I here? And then just straight up snaps. Jim shows up, but he's killed in like three seconds, so he actually accomplished like nothing. Seriously, you could like remove all of his parts from the movie and nothing changes whatsoever. Jerry and Steph face off, but thankfully Susan shoots him and Steph finishes him off with the knife. So the film was successful enough to inspire more, so in 1989 we get The Stepfather 2, Make Room for Daddy, from Texas Chainsaw 3 director Jeff Burr. After a recap, we learned that Jerry didn't die, but has been institutionalized. He very, very easily escapes because this is the worst security of all time, and this license plate lets us know that we're set in 1989, real time. So four years have passed between the last movie and this one. He heads to just outside LA and meets Eva Lynn and her son, Bastion, and poses as a psychiatrist named Jean. He counsels a whole group of housewives, including Carol and also Stretch, and starts to integrate himself into Carol's life. Maddie here forgets her hat at the doc's house, so when he doesn't answer his door, she just lets herself in for some reason. And then, once in, decides to look through his stuff. Unfortunately, Carol's ex wants to reconcile, so she sets up a meeting between him and Jerry Jean, because, I mean, doesn't that sound like a great idea? Carol. You're seeing a psychiatrist, and you're attracted to him. So you you set him up to talk and have a meeting with your ex-husband. Stop me when I say anything that sounds remotely sane. Well, that goes like you think it would, and Carol and Jean get engaged, like, super, super fast. Maddie, a postal worker, then goes through Jean's mail. I know he's the bad guy, but if he weren't, Maddie's all about breaking the law for no apparent reason. She finds out that he's a fake identity and doesn't tell the police that a man has faked his psychiatric license, of course, and literally just tells him. So I think you know what happens to her. So right before Jean, Jerry, and Carol get married, his secret comes out, and in a final showdown, Todd kills him. Three years later, of course, he's not dead, so we get Stepfather 3 in 1992. Jean Jerry gets plastic surgery to change his appearance because Terry O'Quinn said no thank you, and then reads this magazine from 1990, so that might be our year. He also has a newspaper letting us know that he's escaped again, and it's also September 90, so yeah, that's our year. He kills the doc with a blade that magically doesn't touch actual skin somehow, and then we bounce to nine months later, so I guess June of 91 now, but it's, I guess, Easter for some reason. We meet his new identity, and he's Keith now, and he meets Terry, or I suppose Christine, and her wheelchair-bound son. Pretty soon he's up to his old tricks, and then Keith, Jean, Jerry, and Christine are getting married. So I guess some time would have passed, and then Andy is offered to go on a summer program 
So, I mean, either this is now summer of 92 and a year has passed over the course of the film, or this marriage happened super, super fast. Things start to go sour, so of course our guy starts to plan his next family, and Andy watches this crime show about him, and it says his escape at the beginning of the second film was four years ago, but then said the second escape was nine months ago. So this is supposed to be all in the same year. So Christine and Keith got married after knowing each other for about a month or so. The years don't match up though, since four years ago would have been 1987, two years earlier than that one is set, so either that license plate was way off or this report is. Hilariously, Christine says that things have changed between them and they've only been married for six weeks now. But if you go by the timeline that the film itself set up, that's probably longer than they were actually dating. Keith says that it's Father's Day, so wait, wait, wait. Easter in 1991 was on March 31st. Father's Day was June 16th. Six weeks before that was early May, so that's when their wedding was. So they're saying that Keith and Christine met in, in March, the last day of March, and got married one month later and had enough time to plan a wedding that was, that was this lavish looking. Come on now. Keith Jean Jerry decides to kill his new girlfriend, but there's a face off with Christine. But Andy gets up out of his chair and knocks him into a wood chipper. Now, come on, I mean, there's, there's absolutely no way to bring him back from that, right? Well, you can with a remake. It took 17 years, but 2009 gave us The Stepfather, which would start the same way as the original, although it's around Christmas. And The Stepfather is now Dylan Walsh and named Grady. There's an ad for a phone that was released in late 2007, so this could be Christmas of 07, and then they say that it's been six months, so we'd be in 2008 now, if that's right. He meets a TV cop slash doctor, and then says it was six months later again, so I guess it'd be the ending of the year. But everyone's wearing light clothing, like t-shirts and tank tops, so I'm guessing that police scene is edited out of place and should be in line with this stuff here. Grady is David now and engaged to Susan, and her son comes home from military school and is immediately suspicious, but then again, his suspicion should be focused on his girlfriend here because she might be the killer and be blaming Johnny Depp for it. This website doesn't give any dates, but it does have an ad for a kung fu zoo, and I have no idea what that is, but I but 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 I, I kind of really need to know. What what what's a kung fu zoo? <laughs> He kills Susan's ex-husband, and Kelly brings a bunch of college applications for the 2008 and 09 school year, so we're definitely in the summer of 08. David continues to do a series of extremely questionable things to the people around them, but thankfully, for some reason, no one believes anyone about anything that they're talking about. People thankfully also keep doing really stupid things like this victim who is all packed up and ready to go away like her bags are in the car and it's about to storm but she just has to get that umbrella out of the pool before she goes everything falls apart and wait wait a who am i here eh not as good then david is wounded and has a knife but there's three of them here, and Michael is a damn crowbar. And yet they go up into the attic? Okay. Michael and David fall off the roof, and we cut to a month later, and David has a new identity and is starting over. So there you have it, four movies that tie together not so bad. The first two movies tie together extremely well, I think. The third movie not so much has a couple of time glitches that don't make a lot of sense but it's it's not a not a big problem and of course the fourth one is a remake so it's in its own separate continuity and all in all these are not bad films um i really enjoyed watching quite a bit of them the first two are really enjoyable the first stepfather movie is great uh the second one is very fun in its own right the third one's actually pretty entertaining as well it's just not as great and the the remake is uh, you could you could skip the remake it's really not that not that enjoyable um, you can't go wrong with Terry O'Quinn as a murderous dad. Um, 
just a slam dunk all around right there and a phenomenal performance just phenomenal um also i should point out that the movie psycho granny which you can watch right now on hulu which christy did the wardrobing and costumes for um is sort of based on the stepfather a little bit um the the script is has some some similarities to it christy actually based some of the wardrobing and costume choices on um the stepfather there's some inspiration there so go watch it and see if you can figure out what inspiration she drew from that movie um and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoy your father's day um hope you're spending time with your kids with your dads um with their memories anything you can have a great time enjoy it um let me know what you thought of this video like what? comment subscribe you know all that stuff what will you tell them to subscribe to the channel tell them to subscribe there you go. If she says so, you ought to do it. Um, thanks, guys. Also, check out the Patreon page. These guys are my patrons, and they are awesome. Thank you so much for helping to support the channel. Thank you for how much for helping me support this little girl. And uh, also, keep watching the videos, and I hope to see you very soon for another great one. Bye, guys. Happy Father's Day. Ah!